My name is Reverend Michelle Roach, and I'm priest in charge at Christ Church Longwood. As I stand in this beautiful historic sanctuary, I am grateful to the many priests of color who have paved the way for me to be here. I am the chairperson of a group of diverse clergy and laity who make up the Becoming the Beloved Community Task Force, established in February of 2022. The group was created after the Canon Nelson Pinder UBE chapter of Central Florida was charged by Bishop Brewer to assemble and report to him on the status of race relations in the diocese. At the January 2022 annual diocesan convention, I delivered a charge to the Diocese of Central Florida's Nelson Pinder chapter of the Union of Black Episcopalians. That charge included an examination of our present anti-racism training. While anti-racism training is a requirement for anyone serving in this diocese, our current political and cultural climate is doing its best to divide us. It is clear that our training is inadequate to the task. I commissioned Dr. John Robertson and Mother Michelle Roach to organize a group of people to meet with each other and then talk with me about the state of race relations in the diocese from their perspective and what we might be able to do about that. I did not want to control the process. I did not select the members. Instead, my hope was for them to teach me and help me think through what we might be able to do together as a diocese. The result of this effort has been the reinvention of our diocese becoming beloved community task force. The job of this task force is the creation of a long-term project that I'm sure will go through many iterations and revisions, but at the heart of its work is a commitment to develop a Christ-like approach to race relations among our churches and in our communities. What you are about to see is a preliminary progress report. This progress report is presented to you with an invitation to come and be a part of what they are doing. Bishop Brewer's directives are, identify how we experience and understand race relations in the Diocese of Central Florida. What plans, projects, and solutions are needed to bring about changes across the diocese. Think prayerfully and creatively. What can be done to make a positive difference? His directives placed us on a journey which will take time to navigate this hefty and laden topic of race relations. We got started and called the group the Becoming Beloved Community Task Force Becoming because we are not there yet. We want to become the beloved community of God. The phrase becoming beloved community is already being used in the Episcopal Church. The symbol given to this work is that of a labyrinth. Why a labyrinth? Because of the journey ahead will have many twists and turns and it will not be solved quickly. Mindsets are difficult to change and accept change. What is meant by the term beloved community? The initial introduction of the phrase beloved community was by philosopher and theologian Josiah Royce, who during the 19th century founded the Fellowship of Reconciliation. It was embraced by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. during the 1960s in his strive to connect love of humanity with moral and just social justice. In the middle 20th century, the Episcopal Church adopted anti-racism initiatives through its resolutions. It was in 1971 that our own Canon Nelson Pinder while serving in the role of Central Florida Diocese Awareness Coordinator, was appointed Canon Missioner 
and instructed to focus on race relations. The Episcopal Church eventually adopted the phrase beloved community in 2017 to lead the way to racial reconciliation and healing through spiritual formation rather than through completing a training or implementing a set of programs. From the Episcopal Church website, I quote, the beloved community is the body within which all people can grow to love God and love the image of God that we find in our neighbors, in ourselves, and in creation. It provides a positive, theologically and biblically based ideal that orients the work of racial healing, reconciliation, and justice. Throughout this journey, we have researched many sources, such as the Racial Justice Audit of Episcopal Leadership 2018 to 2020 report, which examined the importance of knowing the difference between transformational versus transactional experiences to bring about change. We have found that anti-racism training carried out in most dioceses including Central Florida, is transactional. That being, once the training session is completed, it is long forgotten and does not reflect any changes in the person's behavior. Based on the feedback we received from each member of the task force, charts were created to reflect the themes of what each person observes and or experiences with race relations in our diocese. First, we identified the themes of racial conflicts and challenges, such as stereotyping, historical denials, and treatment inequities. Secondly, we identified ways in which we may counteract these experiences, such as community relevance, courageous leadership, guiding resources, and telling our stories. Eventually, general steps may be taken to address these themes. That includes who we are, our baptismal covenant, and transformational training. As we journeyed along, the task force met for the first time in person for a retreat in August of 2022. There we embarked upon spontaneous and clarifying discussions to more specifically identify key topics to address racial reconciliation and cultural divisions. Significant topics were listed on a large flip chart and then rated by individual members. This list of significant topics was correlated along with action plans to help us move forward on our journey. These are leadership, education, and sharing stories. Subgroups were formed for each topic to answer the how question. How will these action plans be achieved? We will now hear from the leader of each group. Good day to you all. I'm Dale Truscott, a priest at St. Richard's Episcopal Church in Winter Park. I'm the leader of the subcommittee of the Beloved Community Task Force, responsible for exploring educational options and challenges for our diocese. These are two of our goals for the coming year. Our first goal is to provide educational resources to the parishes and institutions of the diocese, such as Sacred Ground, resources from the Absalom Jones Episcopal Center for Racial Healing, a Speakers Bureau, and a calendar for study and observance of African American, Native American, Hispanic, and Asian Pacific Islanders, and so forth. Information on some of these and other resources can be found at our information table. Our second goal has to do with helping our youth to become included in becoming beloved community. And again, we see our task as providing resources to you.
My name is Joy Willard Williford, and I'm a retired priest here in the Diocese of Central Florida, serving on the Beloved Community Task Force. Our group was called Sharing Stories. And speaking of stories, have you ever heard of the Reverend Joseph Love? Anyone? I thought no, not. Reverend Love is has a remarkable story because he was the very first ordained African-American clergy person in the Diocese of Florida. And what's even more remarkable, it was way back in 1868, just three years after the end of the Civil War. Our group's first goal was to ensure that the witness of the Reverend Canon Nelson W. Pender does not go the way of that of Deacon Love into the dustbin of history. Accordingly, and in concert with the Canon Nelson Pender chapter of the Union of Black Episcopalians, we are sponsoring a resolution establishing an annual Nelson Pender Feast Day. We're imagining Father Pender's faithful witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ and his wide-ranging contributions to social justice in our own Central Florida community as well as the wider world being shared every summer with campers at Camp Wingman and in the parishes and schools throughout our diocese. In such a way, a new generation will be inspired and Father Pender will continue to be honored and remembered forever. Our second goal is to guide parishes in the discovery of their own unique racial histories and to gather those stories together into a diocesan archive. Beloved Community Task Force members have captured several of these histories already and we're eager to share how you might do so in your own parish. Some of these histories may be surprising. Some may be intriguing. Some are positive and some may be less so, but it is important to capture them before they are lost to history. We would like to see the stories collected and preserved in a consistent and organized manner. We stand ready to provide a mini training on how a parish might go about doing this and are also ready with your cooperation to capture your parish's story ourselves, if that would be easier for you. Hello, my name is Lamar Williams. I've been a member of the Central Florida Diocese for the past 15 years through multiple Episcopal churches. I'm a fourth generation Anglican and my daughter could be number five but that decision is going to be up to her. She might say, Dad, this Episcopal Church is not a place for me because nobody looks like me. That should be a problem that we all care about regardless of our race. As a member of the Becoming Beloved Community Task Force, I'm here to speak to you today on this topic of leadership. This is very important because as a group, we said if the Central Florida Diocese is serious about racial reconciliation and becoming a beloved Central Florida community, leadership has to be a top priority. It needs to be courageous and it needs to be diverse. And we all agree that there is room for improvement for both of these areas. So I have two goals that I would like for us to accomplish by the end of next year to make us more courageous and also more diverse in our leadership. So goal number one, let's build and foster a working relationship with historically black colleges. Goal number two, let's be intentional in our recruitment process and attract clergy members of color to the Central Florida Diocese. Now, here are some potential outcomes from achieving these two goals by the end of next year. So potential outcome number one, it shows Central Florida Diocese is leading by example and is committed on this idea of diversity. It creates awareness of the Episcopal Church in the Black community. And yes, many people in the Black community do not know the Episcopal Church. It also creates the potential opportunity to improve diversity in churches, not just by race, but also by age. It also avoids churches becoming silos of people that think alike and look alike and it forces congregations to learn and adapt to someone new and different from them, and it sends a positive message to that young man or woman of color who might consider becoming a priest or a deacon. 
I can't stress enough how important representation is for future leaders. Now, I will end my portion of this conversation on Matthew 7, verse 13 to 14, the wide gate and the narrow gate. The wide gate is maintaining the current status quo because it's easy, it's comfortable, avoids conflict, and avoids that very uncomfortable conversation. The narrow gate is hard, it's mentally exhausting, it requires self-examination and a level of patience that we can't muster on our own. I am not a priest, I am not a deacon, I am not a Bible scholar, but I know good work does not mean easy work. We need to fight the temptation of doing what is easy and work hard to do what is right. Thank you for your time and attention. And so the journey continues. As we ascertain the way forward to achieve these goals in 2023. How can you, the church, help? Tell the task force the history of your church as it relates to diversity. How have you intentionally sought to include diverse parishioners in your church? And once they are there, how have you included them in the fellowship and mission of the church? In his letter calling us to kingdom living, written April 20th, 2021, Bishop Brewer called the diocese to kingdom living. He wrote, when we carry such indifference or fear of people who are different from us, we do not look like the kingdom of God. We look like the world. God's world and God's kingdom are so much bigger than what we know. Since August 2021, a small group from the UBE have been meeting monthly with Bishop Brewer as we work through the work of the Becoming Beloved Community Task Force. To show our commitment and resolve with this work, the committee is showcasing its new logo. The logo shows at its center the core, the cross of Jesus Christ on the which we stand. The labyrinth, a sign of longevity despite the twists and turns. The three-leaf clover, which represent faith, hope, and love. The unending center of circle of hands, the unity we hope to achieve. We ask your continued prayers as we move forward to establish a comprehensive program for becoming the beloved community we all want to be part of in the Episcopal Diocese of Central Florida. For in the end, we are all beloved children of God, and we are the Diocese of Central Florida.